So a couple of years ago, we were planning a, a ski touring adventure with a couple of a couple of mates. And as part of planning for that ski touring, you know, we were researching different options. And this is the kind of thing that we uh, hoped, dreamed that we would uh, we would get on a ski touring adventure. I'm uh, very lucky to have a couple of adventurous buddies who over the over the last ten years or so we've we've done a lot of adventuring in the hills. And as we were just about to tip over into our fifties, we decided that we needed to do longer adventures to celebrate our turning 50, 50 years old. So we've got uh, Andrew and Anthony and um, Andy. So for Anthony's 50th, we, we jumped on a plane and went to went mountain biking in Whistler for a week, which was amazing, like, absolutely amazing. And then uh, for Andrew's 50th, which was last year, we went down the west coast and we mountain biked uh, Papara and uh, the Old Ghost and did some other biking locally and also went to Craigieburn as well and biked some of the, the trails there, which was uh, very nice. But for, for my 50th, I, I really wanted to go ski touring and I've never been ski touring before, I've done a fair bit of skiing, but just thought that ski touring looked like a great way to adventure in the mountains. And so I thought this would be a, a great opportunity to, to get out and, and try it. So when I first started looking at ski touring and options, I was talking to a buddy down in Christchurch, and he told me about uh, this place, Macaulay Hut, which is up off the Godley. And he rated it as the best backcountry hut in New Zealand. He's a very keen backcountry hunter. And he had heard about some ski touring that happens up and around this area. So he, the idea was he would take us to this hut, he'd go do some hunting, and we'd go and uh, do some ski touring. But as we were planning through the logistics of doing your first ski touring adventure, suddenly, like all of the gear you need, all of the... Um, you know, some of the experience you need to be safe and have a great time and be able to go somewhere adventurous. I started getting a little nervous taking my buddies you know, to do this first trip without having all the gear we needed and any experience. So I started looking at what was some different guided options. And at this point I'd I'd signed up to do an Alpine Skills course and to refresh some avalanche skills. And I you was know, starting to get a little kind of daunted. So I talked to Axel at Alpine Rec down in Tekapo. Has anybody here done anything with Alpine Recreation down there? Been on a trip with them? No? So Axel's amazing. This really a hardcore ski German guy who's into skiing, you know, spends half the year in New Zealand, half the year in Europe, and is, just loves any alpine ski um, adventures. So after talking with Axel for a little while and kind of telling him what we were looking for and what some of our kind of experience was, he recommended that we go ski touring on Ball Pass. So uh, they have Caroline Hut, which is up, up there, which is a, a hut that was built by Alpine uh, Recreation. And you can go and stay there, and you have a guide, and they take you around and tour. So we booked this in, and we, we blocked out a week, jumped on a plane, headed down, we had a day skiing, we headed into Tempo. And as we arrived in Tekapo, the local fire alarm started going. And this is what it was all about. So, one building and a number of out buildings. Um, but it's been a huge fire, and a fire that's been out of control on a lot of fronts. And I just want to thank those firefighters for the tremendous job. Firefighters working on the ground, but also um, our folks go to the 
So some of you might remember that fire. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, a big uh, wild and pine forest went up and it closed the road. And so there we were in Tekapo getting ready to go ski touring and suddenly roads closed and you know, the place is just an sh absolute shambles. So anyway, we had, this, we had this weather window where it looked like we were going to have two, possibly three good days uh, after a dump of snow. So a couple of days into the fire, this, this snow dump arrived and helped to put out the fire uh, and opened up the road again so that we could head up to the, to the village and get ready to hopefully be able to go skiing. With the snow dump, that meant that the avalanche risk was going high and so there was a risk about whether we were going to be able to go up there. So we had a couple of plan Bs. So we woke up on the first day of our, our trip to this, which was a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> it was just amazing, right? Perfect bluebird day, tons of fresh snow, and we had uh, our guide had arranged a key for the gate on the road. So it meant that we could get as far up, up there as you can uh, now that you've got the massive um, gouge that's, that's blocked off. Is it Dove, Dove Cove? No, Dove Stream, I think is where there's now a massive, uh, a massive gouge that you now can't drive up there anymore. Uh, and walking up there, you now have this lovely little detour where you have to just grovel your way up this massive uh, scree slope and then bash your way through the. Wow. Yeah. So, kind of a nice way to start your day. Good couple of hour detour <laughs> and definitely got us, got us warmed up and uh, ready, for, ready for the day. So this is our route on day one, so that's our little detour. <laughs> and then uh, this was our route up. And we were on our route up, they have a few, they put in place a few different ladders and a couple of ropes just to make it a bit more manageable. It's a pretty gnarly uh, grovel getting up there. And in your ski boots with your you know, skis on your back, it was, it was definitely, definitely hard work. But once we were able to get up to about you know, 1,400 metres, we were able to put our skis on and start skinning from there, which made the, the travel a whole lot better. And this was the, the conditions skinning up. So, you know, first time skinning, you know, properly on the mountain, and what a fabulous way to travel. Uh, just so efficient and you know, just a great way to enjoy the, enjoy the scenery. Uh, as we were going up, because of the snowfall and because of the weather conditions, you, know, you had lots of people shooting up the Tasman. So tons and tons of planes and helicopters uh, shooting up kind of at a, you know, once we got high enough, they were kind of at our, at our level and that you know, was quite entertaining watching that and we managed on that day we, we got up high enough to be able to do one run which was lovely you know some reward for our hard work but it was a long day this is the last section as we came up the, the ridge heading towards uh, towards the hut underneath the, the Caroline, Caroline base and this is kind of 10, 10 or 11 hours after we started. So we were all pretty shattered by the time we, we got up here, but it was a, a spectacular, spectacular day in the mountains. And, you know, everywhere, everywhere you looked, your breath was just taken away. We arrived to the here to Caroline Hunt, which, as you can see, is pretty luxurious. Got a, got a fireplace in there, all of the sleeping gears on it, 
all of the dry food that we needed was there. So all we were carrying was our personal gear and a little bit of fresh food. And other than that, everything else uh, was there. With the fresh snow, we had to dig out the, dig out the door and Cool so after resting up and having a good good feed, our uh, our day two dawned another perfect bluebird day. Uh, pretty much no wind for this this day, so we set off uh, skinning further up the, the ridge so that we could start doing some runs and heading up towards uh, Ball Pass itself. So this is run number one of, of this, this stage. So I'll show you some of the, some of the snow conditions. Now I haven't done a huge amount of backcountry skiing in New Zealand. I've done, I've done a little bit you know, off the back of some of the mountains. You know, been fortunate enough to go and do a day's heli skiing uh, in the Harris Mountains out the back, back of Wanaka. So this was you know, just sensational conditions. You know, light drive, powder, beautiful and easy to ski in, and like, spectacular views. So. Did you hire gear, Andre? Did you hire skis? And yeah, so all of the ski gear was provided by Alpine Rec, Alpine Recreation, uh, other than the ski touring boots. And we hired those from a place in Christchurch uh, as we went down. I think it's called Nylons. There's a dark field. We, we stopped off and picked up our ski touring boots. And that was, and then the rest of the, all of the emergency gear and ski gear was provided. So, Alpine Rec had this set up in Techno, which is really cool. It's like this kind of oversized house, and you you can stay you stay there at the start and the end of your trip, and they have a, sort of like a big communal kitchen space. So you know, there were a couple of different groups in there, which was which was really fun. And they have this garage set up that is just has gear, amazing, you know, mountain gear, everything you could possibly uh, need for any of the adventures that they take they take their clients on. So it was great being able to just get fitted out and, and not have to worry about anything. Yeah, so day two uh, is our road. So up, did a couple of runs, up to Ball Pass, down the other side, down the glacier, and a couple of runs, <laughs> <laughs> back to the hut. So, a really, uh, really cool day. And this was the pinnacle of the day, skiing off the back of Ball Pass. This, this run was Seven to eight hundred vertical meters in uh, these conditions. And, you know, long enough that you needed quite a few stops on the way down. You know, the, the legs were burning. It's a, it's a hook of body, you get in there. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. So day one we were coming up off yeah. the the Tasman, and then yeah, this was uh, our time going down. That side of the, the pass. So we that was the first section that we skipped down, and uh, from there we skipped uh -huh. uh, as far down as as you can go before you kind of get to the, the big bluffs, uh, and you have to you have to stop and turn around and ski to her back up. But ski touring back up there was actually you know, really nice. You were in the shade 
um, so then we didn't get too hot. Uh, and yeah, there was a, a work that we could speed her up, but it wasn't it wasn't super steep, so it was really you know, very nice. Uh, I guess the only the only you know, tough part was by that stage Andrew's uh, blisters on his heels were starting to really kick in, so we had a couple of stops to put the blister patches on and <laughs> manage that, which was unpleasant. Part. So one little gnarly bit as we were coming back, trying to get back uh, back back to the hut from skiing in the glacier. And our, our guide had to put in a, a safety rope, built an anchor with his, with his skis actually, and then ran a safety rope and had us hooked in just to get through a bit of a bit of an army piece. And then uh, back to the back to Caroline Hut. Uh, Andrew doing the honours of uh, the hut pee bucket <laughs> <laughs> uh, duties in the morning. So this is on on our, on our next morning, you can see the clouds come in, and you know, while we were there, we got to experience a couple of spectacular you know, sunsets and sunrises. And Another pie after that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Looks that way, doesn't it? So, yeah, it was it was one of those places that you'd be you'd be sitting in the hut and. You know, suddenly the magic hour of light would arrive and just just wanted to be outside in it, you know, taking photos and experiencing being in that environment. But you know, it was pretty cold out there as well, so you just go ahead and take a couple of photos, you know, try and take as many photos as you can with, with your gloves on and uh, you know, shoot back in the hut and come out again. It was amazing. So then into uh, our last Day, so this is day three, and the snow conditions uh, still uh, amazing. So the forecast for this day was for you know the nor'easter to start to build. So we're heading out down on the, the Tasman side uh, of the of the ridge. We, we're going out a different way than we came in, and I'll, sh I'll show you I'll show you that soon. But this is essentially heading down towards uh, Dove Stream, which is where the big gouge is. So we're heading down a little bit further south than where we, where we came in. And so lots of spectacular terrain in there. And great, great ski country. Yeah. Um, Day three with the new snow, we were starting to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a crust on down low, but um, still lots of lots of great ski conditions. So day three, we do a couple of runs, and then this is down south, and then we we'll have to climb up again. To get over to Cove Stream to get down and get back to uh, get back to the car. And uh, Alpine Rec and I think you know others have been involved as well in creating quite a good route there because of the uh, because of the, the slip and the gouge. You know, being able to get up onto Bull Pass, um, you know, without having to do that detour, we can develop the which is yeah, pretty gnarly in places. Uh, this is one of the kind of last climbs of the day, and you can see the Nor'easter is starting to starting to flare up, and it got a little bit sketchy here for a while. You know, with that wind building up and all of that fresh snow, you know, suddenly you've got you know, wind slab avalanche risk, and not long you know, after here, our, our guide saw a small wind slab avalanche. So you know everything kind of got pretty serious for 
for an hour or so as we navigated through some of that difficult country, uh, including you know, Mark, our guide, having to actually take his skis off and you know, stomp, a, stomp a line, really, for us to be able to, to skim through just because you know, really gnarly crust and you're you know, up above bluffs that if you, if you slip, it's not going to go very well. So that was all pretty terrifying when you when your guide is getting a bit a bit antsy. But uh, you know I mean, we had all the gear, and we had all the support, and we were really thrilled to have a guide navigating us through that little uh, part of the piece of the equation. And then just a, a clip coming down uh, <laughs> Cove Stream. Um, so like our way up, you know, they've put a couple of ladders in, a couple of ropes to help you through these, these areas. Uh, it's pretty groggy. <laughs> Not selling them. <laughs> We were able to ski down quite a long way. I think we, from our, from where we skied down to, I think we might have spent an hour, maybe an hour and a half getting down from there. So, you know, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but you know, it wasn't. There were not patches where it wasn't too nice either. Uh, and travelling in your ski touring boots. So, we made the. Based on our guide's recommendation, we made the call to not take other boots and to travel the whole time in our ski touring boots. Largely because we had all of that fresh snow, so travelling on day one, ski touring boots are actually fantastic. You know, they keep your feet warm, they protect your feet, and you know they have enough kind of flex in them so that you're sure okay. Uh, that wasn't kind of our original thinking. We had some other boots, but carrying another pair of boots to go and do do that was you know, not not an idea that we were that excited by, and we had to kind of wait on. And this is us. <laughs> so by this stage, you know, we're all a bit naked uh, after three days of you know, pretty pretty big days, and pretty hard effort, you know, travelling in the mountains. And you know, one of the I guess one of the kind of jokes from the, the trip was that for Andrew, after I think we were kind of three or four hours into the first day, he was like, you know Andy, I'm not coming on your hundredth <laughs> a trip. You know? uh, so that was reiterated a couple of times later, and uh, you know, we definitely reminisced about some of our more mellower adventures. Um, you know, it's very easy looking back now and going, "Wow, you know, that was just an amazing trip," and it definitely was an amazing trip. And uh, you know, there were definitely some some bits that yeah. he's pretty soft. Though. What's that? He's pretty soft. He is pretty soft. <laughs> And with the nor'wester, some, some nice uh, cloud formations, and you know, managed to get our way back to our vehicle, and and got back to to Tekapo to be able to enjoy a, a, a fabulous feed, and and caught up with some of the other people who had been uh, doing another trip up on the, the Tasman, and they had been staying. Uh, up in you know, one of the dock huts up there, which you know, has no heating. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think, and there's another one up there. Oh, Tasman Saddle. Tasman Saddle. Yeah. I think that might have been at Tasman Saddle. Yeah. So we were, we were gloating about being in this beautifully warm uh, hut with all of our gear there, you know, all our telling stories about having to live in their sleeping bags and permanently have the, the fireplace going in order to be able to you know, melt snow for, for water. So you know, we were feeling, <laughs> feeling pretty, uh, pretty happy with ourselves at that point. So, yeah, that's, that, that's our trip. Uh, one of the things 
from those clips, I put together a few different videos from some of the adventures that, that are, we've done uh, together over the years. And if you're interested in seeing some more of the footage from that trip, you can go uh, onto YouTube and you can also see some other adventures that we've, that we've done.